Hi, it's Megan. I was near the Besame shop in Burbank and I dropped in. It's a very, very adorable shop and they give me kind of some sneak previews of their perfumes which are coming out in December. They have one, I think starting with 1910 and then going all the way up through the 60s. They have a perfume for each decade, which is kind of a cool concept. And that's one of the things that was really kind of fun about the shop is kind of the retro vintage feel. So this review is for the lipstick, but I also got Rouge Cream and the Violet Brightening Powder, both which I have on. But Gabriela Hernandez is the founder of the company, and she was not there the day I was there, so I didn't get to talk to her. But she's written a book about beauty, classic Hollywood beauty, and then she's trying to recreate the actual lipstick shades and some of the products that um, the actual screen actresses wore in movies. I wish when she put like the decades and everything on the lipsticks that she maybe put a movie or an actress or whatever where this was coming from, but I don't know, maybe for copyright reasons you can't do that. I don't really know. But I did get two of the lipsticks and then they gave me, I was so thrilled, they gave me two samples. So I've got four colors here. And I've, I'm starting with the um, Dusty Rose, which is from 1969, and I'm going to put on darker and redder shades. So by the end, it's going to be a little messy, but I like to do it on camera because then you can see exactly how opaque these are, you can see how they apply, um, and I just have found that doing it off camera doesn't give the same experience. So anyway, the first one's Dusty Rose, and packaging everything, it's just adorable packaging, it's really cute. This is the box, and then you got the little lipstick tube in this little red pouch. And then you open it up. These are $22, and it's 0.12 ounce, so it's about the same as most lipsticks. You open it up, and then it's got this kind of squared off thing, which honestly I find for me to make the application a little bit harder because I find it hard to get, I don't know, I'm just not that coordinated. It's just harder for me to get it on my upper lip, but it's not that hard. It's like a minor little nitpicky, like nothing. Um, so anyway, Dusty Rose, they said it's a natural rose for every day, best for light to medium skin tones. It's got a semi-matte finish. Everything I got has a semi-matte finish. So it's kind of like a, um, a creamy matte kind of thing. It reminds me actually a little bit of the NARS Audacious lipsticks. And they say with one coat full coverage, maybe not quite as shiny, and they say the highest natural pigment contains content for all of them, by the way, for a smooth, indelible, feather-proof finish. And it's enriched with squalene, I don't know what that is, vitamin C, and aloe. They're vintage reproduction reds, the exact shades used by your favorite Hollywood starlets. I don't know where she got them from, but I think it's a really cool concept. It's one of those things that I didn't know I wanted, but um, when I hear it, it's like, yeah, you know, I always did look at some of these movies and think, you know, I love what she's wearing. How could I get something like that? And if it's a new movie, then usually at the credits it's either, you know, a certain brand or whatever. But when you look at the old stuff, it's just stuff that isn't that easy to find. So this is Rose. It looks like this. And what I liked about this shade was that I felt like they have a lot of reds. Um, I think they have like almost 20 shades. I should have counted that. Maybe I'll check that and put that on the video. Um, it's a good idea. But uh, they also had a shade there that I did not see on the website that came with a scarf that was created by someone in conjunction with the brand. Um, I thought this was just a more wearable everyday shade. Sometimes I just can't wear red, frankly. And this right here was a really warm, bold pink, rose, a little bit dusty, um, that was flattering and I guess I think it's slightly unusual just because finding a real vibrant, rich, kind of semi-matte, not bright pink or dusty rose kind of thing, rose pink, can be really hard. But it's basically one of those workhorse shades that you can use any time and it works great. So I like it. And these, these actually do last really, really well on me. They last a good three hours, which... I just seem to chew through lipstick and just don't have good luck with things lasting. And I always say on my videos, unless it looks like this, I don't consider it lasting. If there's like little bits of color left, that is not lasting. That is just icky. Um, I do get slight staining with all the shades, even with this one, but less than I expected with the darker shades. 
So the next one I got is from 1946. I'm going backwards in time just because they get, well not completely backwards, they get progressively darker I guess. Um, well, now I'm going to contradict myself. This is a deeper red. This is vel red velvet. And I love when I do that. Of course, I always forget Kleenex to blot my lips. So this is red velvet. And they say it's a deeper red suitable for everyday wear. Semi-matte, again. And you can see how creamy the application is. What I love about that is I don't get bleeding. And I also don't get any wandering at all. Uh, sometimes with reds, when I go like this, I can get like a, a line, an outer... Increasingly, I'm finding it with the formulas. I didn't ever have it happen before, but some of the new formulas, I don't know why. I get like a line that looks like I have a liner on. This doesn't happen. I just get a really smooth, rich, beautiful coverage. And look at how beautiful the finish of it is. I really like these lipsticks. I was surprised because um, I think good reds are easy, great reds are not. This just does look vintage. Oh, there's a cat waking up behind me. This does look like a very beautiful vintage classic red. This one I thought, I'm going to put Besame Red next to it. I thought this one had, um, I don't know, a little bit like gash, almost like a blackened red with just a tiny bit more of a berry tone to it on me. Uh, it doesn't say that it's got a berry tone, they just say it's a deeper red. But I guess the closest I would say it's like a little bit like gash. I should have a little bit from Urban Decay. The next one, okay, these cute little matchbooks, which you can buy these. I just think it's a cute way to do the lipstick. So if, I, if you want to try a lipstick on, for most of the shades they have this. And so you're getting one of these. You're not getting an old icky lipstick that someone has already tried on that they've cleaned off. So I kind of like that. So if you see, you compare it. This is a much brighter red, I think. They call it, so Besame Red is a 1920 red, they say. They say it's a true red with a cooler blue tone base and brightening and vibrant. And again, it's a semi-matte. When I was in the store, there was a woman who bought three tubes of these. You can see even with this little stick, really smooth, even application. These are actually a great, first of all, this stick lasts for more than one application. So I feel really thrilled to get these. Um, it la and then it applies beautifully. This is kind of a cool thing to carry. Like if you want to just travel light or just have like a little matchbook of lipstick in your, in your little bag, it's kind of fun. Um, I think these are $6 if you buy them, but I, they were given to be when I bought my other stuff. I really like this red. Um, definitely brighter. You can see. <sighs> Very, to me, a classic red. Um, the next one is from 1930. They say it's a noir red. That's what they call it. And they say this is a deep plum, originally part of the Great Gatsby or the Gatsby collection. And this is kind of, it looks black. Hi, my memory card filled up and I don't remember what I was saying before the camera shut off and I had to download all the videos and all that, change the memory card. So we're going to go to the last color, which is Noir Red from 1930. And this they call, oh, that's what I was doing. I was reading this, a deep plum. Again, you can see how beautifully it applies. This is a really dark shade. So it has that satin matte finish and what I think about this shade is that it's really stunning. Um, I've really been into these types of shades lately, and I found that 
they're super, super hard to find ones that are good. You can see it's like a really blackened reddish plum. Super dark. It looks darker on, I think, than swatched. It looks almost black on. And the way it looks on camera is the way it looks off camera. It looks lighter on my arm, I think. But I was wearing it yesterday, and um, this is kind of a shade that a lot of people promise, but I don't really feel like they delivered. It's obviously a very, very dark noir kind of a look. Um, not everyone's going to like it on me. I have to be really careful. I was surprised that the orange, I have an orange cream blush on. I was, or say they call it apricot. I was surprised it actually worked, I thought, with this. Because usually when I wear a shade like this, I have to use a really deep, plummy kind of blush and be very careful. But I actually like the apricot. It adds a pop, a pop of color and works. What I liked best about the shade, besides the fact that a lot of people promise this type of shade and don't really deliver, um, is that it wears evenly. And I found that a lot of these really dark shades, sometimes they have to be really stiff, which some people hate that stiff matte formula, to get it to really wear. Um, because it's so much darker than your regular lip. If it doesn't wear evenly, or if it starts wearing like in the middle here where your, your mouth tends to get wet, quicker it just looks really bad you can see a really strong dramatic difference in the color of your lips your natural lip color and the lip that you've put on so this one really impressed me with the great wear it was three plus hours for me but it was even and it didn't bleed and it didn't go anywhere so I love this shade it's probably not the best shade for me but it's just what I happen to be into right now I think it's a great example of it. This is actually, of the shades I have, this one's my favorite because it's the most unusual and it's just such a find to get a great, deep, rich shade like this that wears beautifully. It's not that it's impossible, but it's hard. A little dramatic, but anyway, that's, that's the way it goes. So overall, I really like this brand. I did find there's a lot of matte, so I ended up putting a little bit of a highlighter on my... Um, my uh, eyelids just as like an eyeshadow but it's kind of fun to have this soft pretty retro matte look that is what cosmetics once were like anyway that's the end of my review I would love to hear comments thoughts other shades I liked this brand a lot surprisingly I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did but I do um, and please subscribe on YouTube that's it thanks Bye.